evening everyone and welcome to Duda Day Story Hour. Um, I am Christian Sanders, a graduate of the class of 2014. I am joined today with my wonderful co-host Catherine Patton. I will let her introduce herself. And we just want to oh go ahead. My apologies. Yeah, I'm Catherine, uh, class of 2010, uh, petroleum engineering and leadership and Sigma Kappa. And I think I did neglect to mention I was a football player, tour guide, orientation leader, peer mentor, a couple other things um, that we'll leave out, maybe debaucherous at times, but always a good person, excited about the college. And so we represent the MCAAC. Um, which is the Marietta College Alumni Association Council. Um, we are here today to really invite you all to share some stories. We reminisce on some really good times celebrating Duda Day and its 50th anniversary. Really, really excited to have this event with, with you all tonight. Glad that everyone that is here could join us. Um, and Doug, if you want to go ahead and throw the slide deck up, I'd like to preview a couple things before we get started with tonight's feature event. Hey, Erica, Laura's in there. Yeah, if you could see her, Laura Weiss. She's she's sitting there. <laughs> Phil, you happy to see some old friends here? This is wonderful. Okay. Muted. Oh, now I'm muted. <laughs> mm. Sorry, sorry, I'm missing you there, Phil. He's muted. Yeah. As he yeah. Said, such a bum. All right. It's there I go. Shortly. Um, go ahead, Phil. Yeah, I see Laura there, and I'm trying to get my wife, Erica, to uh, come out of the kitchen and see someone that she knows. And there's a Sigma cap in there, which my wife, Erica, is a Sigma Kappa, too. So this is wonderful. I'm glad that both of you join us tonight. All right. Um, here pretty soon, we will preview the events that are happening regionally. There's events happening all over the country to celebrate Duda Day everywhere in the 50th anniversary of Duda Day. Really, really excited about that. For those who are here in Cleveland, um, we will have an event um, this coming Sunday, of which we'll meet at Masthead Brewery um, about 11 or so. Um, have a few social sodas and then head over to the Guardians game and enjoy watching the Guardians take on the Oakland Athletics all together. Um, it'll be a great event that is available for registration on um, on the Connect platform. Um, I forget the name every so often, um, but if you are on our Pioneer Connect, I want to say, um, you can see that as well. I believe the events are also open for registration on our Instagram um, yeah, Christian, we got the we've got the URL on the screen for you, everybody, right there. So if they can follow that, they can register. Everybody can see the screen or no? No, we can't. Oh, okay. Well, there's that Marietta College uh, education at work, huh? All right. Hold on one second. I, I hope this doesn't hit a button, but Doug, when you were there, I don't think we're mainstream using computers. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Especially not so. <soon>. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Okay, there we go, right? All right. So do that day everywhere and doing this for 50 years. There's our social media handles to ensure that uh, we will all be able to connect with each other via um, social media as well as learn a little bit more about the events. We do want to thank all of you for your support during the annual day of giving. Um, annual day of giving every year for Marietta is on Valentine's Day, February 14th. This year, we shattered all of our goals. Um, we hit a lot of our benchmarks. And we saw more than $400,000 come in, which is really big for Marriott at this time. And so we thank all of you who are not only to, uh, able to participate in Giving Day, but also being here tonight. Homecoming of 2024 will take place between on the weekend of October 24th through 27th. This will be an absolutely wonderful time. I know I plan to be on campus for homecoming and hope to see some of you all also be able to join us on campus for homecoming. Um, it'll be certainly wonderful to be able to check out some athletic events, 
um, see some updates to the campus, as I'm sure there'll be some repairs after the recent floods, but really, really excited to see what homecoming will look like um, for this, this upcoming school year. All right, and so for our Dude All Day Everywhere events in the Akron Canton area, folks will be meeting on Friday, April 19th at Belltower Brewery. Also in Baltimore, they will be meeting on Friday, April 19th at Union Brewery. Cleveland, we will get together on Sunday. As I said, we're going to meet at Masthead Brewery at 1130 and then go to the Guardians game that starts about 140. For those in Columbus, they have had their event on summer, Sunday, April 14th. Fort Lauderdale is actually going to gather tomorrow at Rocco's Tacos. It's going to be an absolutely wonderful event in Fort Lauderdale. You can always find these events on People Grove. Saturday, um, April 20th, there will be a meeting in, in the Houston area at St. Arnold Brewing. New England will get together on Friday at the Peddler's Daughter. For those in New York, they will have a gathering on April 18th. In North Carolina, we'll be meeting in the Riley area on Saturday, April 20th at noon at the Linwood Brewing Concern. Um, and then the Pittsburgh Alumni Association will be gathering on Saturday, April 20th at the Federal Galley um, about two o'clock. And so really, really excited to see these events kick off, allow our alumni from all different walks of life to gather together. Um, wherever you might be on your journey, it's a great opportunity to connect with someone on the Long Blue Rhine and bring them across. Got a couple photo galleries, but before we get too deep into the photos, I would like to introduce someone who, from what I understand, has been mistakenly called the founder of Dude Ade, Mr. Glenn Mello. Hello, Christian. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what what's happened over the years, but uh, uh, it's been a fallacy that uh, I was given the honor of creating Dude Ade back in 1974. Um, I don't know how that came about. I remember, do I, well, I do recall Duda Day when it, when it started there. I uh, was part of that, but I did not, I was not the one who uh, created it. Uh, I, I've gone through some of the records there. They say it was in the Marcolian. I can't find that. Uh, I really believe that there were two gentlemen, uh, Dan McGrew and Jim Stevens, and uh, they were in uh, advancement or PR or something at, at at the college at the time. And then I think Dan wrote a book on Marietta College. And I worked in the admissions office for three years as a student and got to know them pretty well. And I'm not sure what happened, but somehow um, a few years ago, I started reading these things about Duda Day and that I was given <laughs> credit to starting it. And something about the fact that I borrowed it from a nickname of my roommate, Dave Duda Gibson. I don't know who Dave Gibson is. He was never my roommate. I have no idea if he even went to the college, if he was a student there. So I'm not sure if, the, if there was, uh, I know there's a lot of things going on back in 1974 that a lot of brain cells wasted and that could be part of it. But uh, I do recall Duda Day. It was, it, it was as some of the uh, articles have been said, it was a, a time to just blow off steam before finals. And I know that the, back then, um, actually the college sponsored that you could have kegs on, on campus and all that. And there was the, uh, down, it was in the area that, which I guess is now behind uh, uh, Daniel Webster uh, uh, dorm and in before the, uh, the soccer field down there, that's where a big gathering was and uh, they had uh, volleyball and beer and uh, frisbees throwing and uh, uh, a lot of brain cells being wasted down there before finals, you know. But uh, I, I do see some of the pictures and uh, some of them look quite familiar. <laughs> but uh, I, I can't take credit for it. I mean, I've been given credit for the last, I'm not sure, 25 years or so since people started talking about you know, re-emphasizing do die day, but uh, uh, sad to say it wasn't me. Uh, uh, but I don't, I, like I said, uh, if they can track down this David Gibson uh, and find out who his roommate was, but it wasn't me. So <laughs> great days though at Marietta. I'm looking forward to going back for my 50th uh, at homecoming and 
with a bunch of uh, Lambda Chi's going back, I know, and uh, we'll have a good time there. All right, now, Glenn, before we let you off the hook, now, you say it wasn't you. You don't know this Duda Gibson guy. Um, if nope. we can find him, you know, we'll do the best we can. I know I might do some personal research myself. Um, I might be more invested in this than I might be in planning my wedding that's coming up in a few months. Um, <laughs> well, now, I was involved with Interfraternity Council, and I know that we got involved with some of that stuff, but I thought that was more of a, I thought it was more of an independent thing that, that that went on at the time. So independent efforts that sparked what is now known as Duda Day. Mm -hmm. um, looking at Duda Day, you know, you're coming back for your 50th. We're celebrating the 50th of Duda Day. Can you talk to me a little bit about just the initial first Duda's, right? Um, what did that look like on campus, right? We're, we're looking at 50 years. You would have been there for the first um, what did that look like on campus um, to you? It, it, it just was a, it was a, a time that they thought of just to blow off steam. And uh, uh, they said they just brought in a bunch of kegs and uh, Frisbees and uh, uh, music blaring. Uh, that's, that's about as much as I can remember, to be honest with you. Glenn, I, I can you... Go ahead. Kevin. Can you clarify if uh, if the college was providing kegs? Yeah, I believe they did. Oh, sure. Back then, it was uh, first of all, you could have kegs on campus. Uh, it was, the drinking age was eighteen back then. Okay, and um, uh, I know all the uh, private parties, all the fraternity parties, all that. We had kegs of beer, but there were definitely kegs of beer at Duda Day, and it had to be if there was sponsor. It was. It had to go through the the, uh, the administration. Yeah, I have a message from Nancy in the chat that says the student government approved do not. There you go. And Nancy. Yeah. Who's that, so, Nancy? So, Glenn, I'm Nancy Kaplan McCann. I graduated in 1976. Okay. And so 1974, I was a sophomore, and that was the first Duda Day. Yeah. And um, my understanding is one of my sorority sisters, I was in AZ, um, Patty Bain Bachner, she was the secretary. And she said it was definitely approved by the student government. The administration yeah. had to approve it. And I believe back then we what was eight between 18 and 21, you could only drink three, three, two, two beer. beer, three, two beer. It was right. horrible. Yeah, it was um, like flavored yeah. water, flavored uh, water. So it was. Right. So anyway, I just wanted to kind of clarify that. And I actually do have the Marcolian article, if you don't have it, um, where you're credited with everything. So what, anyway. what year is that Marcolian article? I don't 74? know. I have a copy of it. I'll be happy to send okay. it to whomever. Because I know Charlie sent it to Doug, but Charlie Nelson was the president. Uh, now, were you on student council, Glenn? No, I was on. I was the president of uh, IFC, the fraternity council. You know, and there was a guy, and I think that it was his name was Joel. Joel. Jo hmm. And I, and I thought that he was the one that uh, really got into this uh, do that day. Uh, but I'm not sure. But I know it was definitely it, it, it went through, uh, uh, as Nancy said, went through student council, whatever. It was definitely an independent thing. It wasn't I know it wasn't a fraternity thing. I know that we got involved with it, but it wasn't uh, didn't come from us, didn't stem from us. It didn't come from the fraternities, but it no. came from the student government was right. involved. And I thought she told me somebody came up with the idea and I think she credited you. Well, so <laughs> so anyway, anyway, it's nice to meet you and see you. Um and um we had a lot of fun with the AZs back then. Oh know? yeah, yeah, we were a fun group. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do either of you want to elaborate on that fun? Oh no, 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 no. But but you know, my memories of that first Duda day is, you know, uh, we were in front of Gilman as I remember that hill. I can clarify. And but those, I, I, the, those pictures that are pretty, I, I know a lot of those people. Yeah. Are, and, so. and there were all kinds of games going on and hay rides and things like that. And it was just, there was a lot of camaraderie. I mean, it's just a, a, you know, great time to be together, to be outside. The weather was great before finals. So I have very fond memories, clearly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
So, okay, I'll, I'll shut up. I, like I said, I was there for the first Duda day. So. Now we may be having a mystery in terms of who founded Duda day. Yeah. But <laughs> right now I do want to clarify something for historical context. Now, Glenn, is this you in these great shorts up at the top? Is that you? No, that is not me. No, but I know that on the, on the bottom right hand corner there, that's, uh, uh, it, the kid's name is Denny Hurley, uh, with the with the, looks like whipped cream on his face, and it looks like a kid next to him. I think it was Lou Rude, and in the red shirt behind, I think that's uh, Tony Zelenka and Rich Wasco next to him in the blue. Um, uh, yeah, that is a fantastic recollection. It's yeah. fantastic. And I think at this point in time, we might be open to opening this up. Um, and we take, you know, some stories and we can move through our different photos. We have photos through the generations um, of Duda Day. We'll preview those briefly. Um, if you have a story that's attached to one of these photos, trust us. Everyone here would be really, really excited to hear it. Um, and so if you raise your hand, we'll go ahead and get a nice little line going of jumping in, sharing a story about your Duda Day experience. And if you have a photo that's attached to any of these decades, Please state your, your graduation year, and we will go ahead and call you in. I think the first person we might see, and Catherine, tell me if I'm wrong, is Moon Mullen here. All right. That's right. And before Moon Mullen, before we let you get started on your 1982 story, I want to set the expectation that we also want to hear about any involvement you might have had or influence you might have had in subsequent Duda days after your graduation. Well, being a, a Marietta local, Duda Day was uh, infamous. I graduated Marietta High School in 1973 and uh, had the great privilege in 1981-82 being the student body vice president. And as uh, was mentioned before, you only had to be 18 to drink 3-2 beer. And it was getting close to the end of the year and we'd had some some great concerts and as uh, as vice president of student body I was in charge of the student planning board programming board so we had some you know ozark mountain daredevils and almond brothers and made a little money so at the end of the year um uh, you know it's like use it or lose it so um we we bought 65 kegs of beer stroh's beer um uh, set <laughs> set the 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 beer truck in the middle of Fifth Street, which was still a, a a city through street at that point, you know, blocked both ends, and uh, had a had a party of major proportion, and you know, I remember some of it, but looking at some of the pictures, I see, oh yeah, those folks were in the uh, that was the Sig Jail. And for, I, I think, you know, for a buck or five bucks, you could get the SIGs who were, you know, a lot of football players, a lot of jocks to go uh, grab up a person, throw them in the jail, and then, you know, you pay the ransom and get out. There was also the the pie in the face. Um, but we, in, in addition to, you know, a hell of a party, we uh, had great concerts. Friday night, we had the James Cotton Blues Band. James Cotton was the heart player for Muddy Waters for 25 years. And then throughout the day and, and the whole whole deal, it was uh, it, it was uh, a party like yeah, Marietta College doesn't get to sponsor these days and uh, happy for that time. And uh, I guess we go on to, you know, 2024. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Do we have any others who are open to, to sharing stories at this point in time? I have, um, in the various branches of useful knowledge, a history of Marietta College here at my desk. Is that the Dan McGrew book? It is. Yeah, okay. And, um, he doesn't mention how it started. But he does mention that there was the president of the college, President Cleland, doing a demonstration of how to tie a bow tie. Right. 
Yep. So Glenn or anyone else in the seventies, do you remember how to tie a bow tie? I do not. I remember that uh, Dr. Uh, 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 President Cleland uh, always wore a bow tie and he did do a demonstration on how to, how to tie it. This also ver I can verify that, that. This also mentions hula hoops, um, open mm -hmm. mic opportunities at Dawes Library. Anyone here get on the open mic? Well, I got on open mics and I still do, uh, which is, you know, a, a great legacy from 40 years ago. But um, yeah, it, it it was it was such a free for all that people came in from all, all families and relatives and friends from, you know, Ohio and, and farther away. It, it, it was just by 82. It was it was a, a legendary, you know, not quite like OU Spring Fest, but a, a you know, several thousand people that that came and, uh, you know, played liberally as, as you're supposed to do at a liberal <laughs> art college. Um, but, you know, damn, they changed the laws and, and, and you got to be 21. And, you know, you look at it today and uh, when we had 100% of the student body old enough to have a 3-2 beer and today, you know, folks have to hide uh, in inside their rooms and 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 have a beer or a shot. Uh, yeah, hell, you know, those were the good old days. How would you handle the townies? <laughs> you know, townies were welcome because we did a deal where you had to buy a Duda Day cup to get a, a beer. So we charged, you know, I, I think two bucks to, to buy the plastic you know um red solo only it was a, a white solo that had a Duda day logo on it and if you if you you know passed the the muster to get your 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 glass you could fill it up and until you know there was no more filling and with 65 kegs uh there were there were a lot of folks who needed help getting home that afternoon <laughs> Moon or Nancy, do you remember just speaking of townies? Uh, I don't know if that they still have this, but Bandorama. Oh yes, yes, I do remember Bandorama. That was huge. I think there was uh, uh, high school bands from all over the county or whatever it would uh, on a Saturday afternoon in yep. March and, and play, and then go down to Don Drum Field. But uh, I know they used to. I, I don't know why the parade would always went by. Uh, fraternity road down there and it was uh quite the sight quite the sight yep. you know quite you know? the sound too i remember waking up to those a lot um mm -hmm. oh, so many parades you know. back then do they um, still have that panorama you know they they still do it's it's kind of uh well it's petered out over the years you know the size of the high school band in marietta you know they they uh used to call it the wall of sound with a hundred kids and mm -hmm. you know, I'm just guessing if they if they muster 25 kids these days, you know the, uh, but they have it. It's in a, a much smaller scale, and mm -hmm. uh, but still good music at, at in Don Drum Stadium. Um, not not quite the amount of fun that it was in those days. Bands were huge back then, huge, and we would just sit out in front with uh, our. Uh, watermelons that have been injected with vodka and watch the <laughs> festivities, you know? So the locals couldn't, uh, didn't know that we were imbibing, you know? So. Um, hey, so I want, I want to throw something out and I just want to, so, you know, in, in addition to everything I've heard so far, I agree with and certainly remember that, but there was a philanthropic element to it, at least in the eighties. So if you look here, we've got Tim Bennett behind uh, the SIG jail. Um, and I talked to him this weekend and he said that he was there constantly. Oh, and then I was a, I was a Lambda Chi and uh, we did a thing called um, Edifest, Edifest Rex because they changed the name to Edifest once in a, one year. I don't know why, but we would buy these junk cars and sell 
um, chances to beat up, beat on it with a, a sledgehammer. Um, and somebody else, I don't remember who, but somebody else did the pie. If you look over there, I think that's Bill Koss getting a, um, getting a pie in the face. Um, those were all fundraisers that uh, the sororities or fraternities did um, and would then donate that to some sort of a charity. So yeah, there was a lot of fun, but there was also some, some, some broader things going on there as well. Well, I was a 79 grad, so I remember bands, beer, a slip and slide down towards uh, Douglas Putnam. Mm -hmm. um, my son graduated in 08, and one of his years, he called me to say with some friends, Dad, tell him what doodah day was like when you were here. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so quite different. Yeah, um, it's awesome that you brought that up, Chris. Um, my my dad went to Marietta as well, and I asked him to tell me about Duda Day. At which point, I found out he was too old to have ever participated in it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a great tradition you share with your son. And then, um, you know, we did a poll on social media a couple of weeks ago about favorite Duda Day memories, and something that happened during my time, which I don't think was officially sanctioned, but definitely screams do it all day to me is every year at like 6 a.m. someone would get a major sound system and use an electric guitar to project uh, the Star Spangled Banner from the fourth floor of Parsons Hall. And that was like your wake up call to start taking shots or celebrating in your own way before uh, slip and slide volleyball. That is a fantastic tradition. And I lived in Parsons where it's absolute last year. And I very much remember someone carrying that out. And what would that have been? 2012. Um, someone just blaring the Star Spangled Banner at 6 a.m. Here I am, this upstanding young student. No, no. <laughs> waking up. And getting really excited and happy to hear the Star Spangled Banner and then looking out into Parsons Field, seeing volleyball beginning to get set up um, and kicking off what, what is, I will say, one of the greatest days of my life. And then oh. some other traditions I'm curious if anyone knows the origins of is have professors always served food at Duda Day? That was a... A big part of my doodah day was professors grilling out hamburgers and hot dogs for everyone in DU field. Now that is something I will say in 2014, I'm jealous of. We didn't have that in my time. Yeah. We had them, they set up on the tent in DU field, like half of DU field. And then the other half of DU field was inflatables, like the inflatable sumo wrestling and the inflatable um, obstacle course and stuff. That's go ahead. That's a future pioneer. Yes, class of 2042. <laughs> I have a, a vague recollection of the Saturday night after the the big keg fest. We had a an a reggae band from Cleveland, a band uh named Ital, and they played in the pit, which was you know, in the old Gilman, it, it, uh, that the the library and, and, and Gilman, the pit was where the smaller concerts happened. And we had an office. We had a, a, a SPEB office in that building. And I have a vague recollection of these reggae cats from Cleveland uh, coming in that office and rolling up some big mob Marleys, uh, you know, I just a vague recollection, but uh, um, yeah, the professors weren't in uh, in in the building, nor was much campus security. But unless Hartel was there, ah, uh, <laughs> uh, well, the, the, in those days, I, I, I think that it was liberal arts and and the. Uh, Although, you know, I think the statute of limitations is, is way over from 1982, but uh, 
but yeah, there were some doobies involved in Dude All Day um, inside MC facilities. Whoa, 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 man. We don't want to send anybody to MC jail, okay? <laughs> right? You know, you go to jail on Twitter now. You go to jail on Facebook. We don't need anybody in Merida College jail. And I think I'm still in the statute of limitations, so we want to try to leave all crimes out of this. <laughs> I'm only being 10 years out. Um, but, Doug, if you could go ahead to that 2010 slide, I do want to share a hilarious story. So in the middle photo there, uh, my dude out day in 2014, we were actually moved off of campus. And I was really proud to see students organize. And we set up in, I think, the like VW Field Hall a couple months, uh, a couple miles away from campus. We ordered buses to bus people up there. We sold tickets. We had our own shirts and we brought our own kegs. And so if you're looking right there, we are in the cab of a 2010 Chevrolet Blazer S10. And right there we have, I believe, nine to 10 kegs visible of 12 total because there was one riding in the passenger seat next to me. And in that particular ride, to pick up beer for Duda Day from Athens and bring it back to Marietta, I not only blew my engine and transmission, but I totaled my car. Oh. But Duda Day was saved because the tow truck put it right in the parking lot of the football workout facility. And we were then able to get someone with a pickup to move them. And he only took like four at a time. I'm like, you got a 3,500 Ram, do better. I was willing to risk my engine, do better. Um, but we were still able to have an amazing Duda Day. And some of the pictures around it were Duda Days of a couple of years before me. Um, I'm pretty sure the one where we have on the right um, of my screen was one of my junior year, as those three ladies were all seniors. I was juniors, great time. Um, but in my particular senior year, we had to move it off campus um, because I don't know who, but someone was moving cars in the parking lot might have been members of a certain team. Um, and they were like, all right, we got have had enough of this right now because they're calling, causing personal property damage. And uh, we then up, ended up pivoting the event off campus. Um, so that's one of my greatest do I day stories was that of my senior year, um, in which I will still say might have topped all the others um, that I experienced on campus. Was, was that at Masonic Park out in Devola? That's it. That's it. I think you had a little bit of something to do with supplying food, but I don't want to throw that out. Well, well, yeah, we brought the pizzas and 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 hooked up the the kegs because we had a liquor license uh, in town at Over the Moon Pizza at the time. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I have a vague recollection of being there too. But just to clarify, since since it's now legal in Ohio, I've heard that uh, you know you can you can smoke a joint. Uh, in the privacy of your own home or some wood somewhere. So, so yeah, I don't, I don't think we're, uh, you know, in public danger of going to Marietta College jail, or I, I hope nobody's jail these days. Oh, and I just want to be on record to say, you know, not all of us are able to own a great pizza shop. Some of us have to work in HR in the morning. <laughs> when we were soliciting stories on social media around different doodah days, I will say we tried desperately to get details on this 2014 extravaganza. And one of the anonymous quotes I got was, I have no further comments on Mayor Moon Mullen, except for the fact that his leadership and bravery contributes, contributed to the success of Duda Day, both during his time in student government and years later as a business owner. Well, uh, still here to tell the tale and, uh, you know, of, if that's not the long blue line in action. You know, I've been in 13 elections and I've won 12 of them. So I guess we we're doing something right and taking care of the people and uh, making sure there was nobody thirsty or hungry was, was you know, part of that job. Let's, let's see, can we hear from maybe Don or Hani? Favorite doodah memories? Well, I pretty much covered it. I was there in the 80s. So um, his the way he described it was pretty much how I recall it. It was, um, it was fun. I mean, there was always music and uh, 
like those guys were saying different fundraising stuff, but mainly it was just, you know, uh, just really pulled everybody together and it was just a really um, light spirited day. And, uh, and there was always lots of people who came back from other years. Um, so that was fun too. Yeah, it was a great event. It really, it really is pretty cool that there's something for 50 years has been bringing, has really been kind of, you know, we talk about the long blue line, but this is a great example of an experience that, you know, transcends, like not everybody had a hard tell, but those who do, you know, feel a kind of bond with one another. But this is, a, this is a bond that, you know, is, has lasted for 50 years. And that's pretty cool, even though Glenn had nothing to do with it. Yeah. Uh, when he was saying that story, I looked at the Marietta website. You're actually on there as credited to it. So in their tradition. So. Oh, I know. Glenn, <laughs> yeah. yeah. you just got to live it. You just got to lean into it and own it and just. Yeah, embrace it. Just embrace it. Got to find Dave Gibson, whoever the hell he is. You know, <laughs> the supposed roommate, Dave Duda Gibson. Now, who was your roommate then, Glenn? If it wasn't Dave Duda Gibson, who was senior your... senior year? I had I was a single. Uh, I had a, a, a room at the Lambda Chi House. I had no roommate. So was this your alter ego? I no, not at all. Not Are at you all. sure? <laughs> in the late of April, you don't throw on a cape. A mask, <laughs> become Dave Duda Gibson, the man who is ready to set us up for finals with a relaxing, now what I might say internationally known holiday, as I believe we do still sit in Guinness Book of World Records about Duda Day. Yeah, oh. I saw it in the uh, on the website. He's got his alias, just has one N in Glenn. So I think that's. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. No picture of Dave Gibson. No. I, I said, I don't know who this guy is. But Christian, that's a great story. You can go with it, run with it. <laughs> you know, if somebody were to uh, uh, just happen to sit in on this thing, they'd think this thing was greater than Woodstock right now, from what it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> I was so, uh, Woodstock doesn't have the longevity that we've had. Yeah, I uh, I'm Phil Air. My wife's Erica Air, um, calling in from Alaska. And we were at school, I was at school 75 to 79. Oh, okay. And the recollections that I have of it was there were kegs of beer all over campus. I mean, they were not only up on the main drag, but they were located all throughout campus. Um, there was uh, lots of fun. In fact, I don't know if anyone can see this, but I'm wearing my 78. Doodah Day oh, right. t-shirt. You see that? That is awesome. Now, somewhere on there it says 78. I don't know if you can see it. Yes. Oh, yes. I yep. took this out yesterday and my grandson said, that looks a little small for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your but, grandson uh, he needs to marry at a college education. He needs to get schooled up on what looks good and what doesn't. Because you look great. The shirt looks great. All these years later, um, that's awesome because here I am about 10 years out. I can't get in my dude out day shirt. So I'm proud yeah. of you. Well, and my that's my daughter, uh, there's a yellow one that came out the year before. I think this is 78. I think 77 had a yellow one. And my daughter's got that one. She actually wears it, uh, wears it over the house every once in a while. But a couple of things to remember, uh, of course, there's beer everywhere. Um, we played a the rugby team on at that time we had a rugby um club and uh a lot of them were sigs um but uh football players and just guys who wanted to play and we would go up on the main uh, street in campus and the andrews hall there was a tree in front of it and we played a game called buck buck and buck buck was one guy would come up and hug a tree bend over bend over, hug the tree, the tree's on one side of his head and it's, he's hugging it. Another teammate would come and hug his hips and hug his hips and you end up with a line that's about 20 feet long uh, with 15, 10 to 15 guys on it. 
and they would wiggle their hips back and forth so it looked like a snake. And another team would stand across the street in front of Gilman and go running towards it. And you would hit, you would hit the, the hit the ass of the last guy on the line and throw yourself as far as you could up towards the front and then hang on. And the object was if, 50, if you held up 15 guys and didn't fall, you won. And if you fell off the pile, then the other team would win. And that, that was, it was buck, buck, number one, here we come. Buck, buck, number two, here we come. Um, and I think, uh, the flagpole in front of Gilman, I don't know if I've got this right. Laura's listening to this, but I remember it's a pretty standard thing, but I remember I think picking her up and hooking her on the flag post on the, where you tie the rope and you can't get yourself down from a flag post if you're up off the ground six, seven feet. And I think I did that to Laura. <laughs> um, and I think it was during that deal I think the three-two versus regular beer was was a lot of baloney because a lot of people used to get drunk on three-two, thinking it was regular beer, and then someone would come in and say, "No, that's three-two beer," and they'd sober up real quick. So I think I don't I I I think three-two still do the job. You just you just didn't tell anyone it was three-two. Um, Bill, this is Dan Hooden. I was the coach of the rugby club that senior year in '79. And I oh. can't get my I can't get my camera to work, but I also was one of those buck buck players. <laughs> buck buck was a great game. I've tried to do that with my uh, grandkids. I got like, I think I've got five grand boys, and you know when you're trying to teach them buck buck, their moms don't seem to like it. <laughs> no, no, they a don't. Couple, a couple yeah. other thing is. Invariably, during these parties on campus, it wasn't just for um, it wasn't just for uh, Duda Day, but invariably the DUs would be out on their porch or on the top of the porch, right next to the Sigma Kappa house. And any Sigma Kappa woman that was walking back to her house had to put up with the abuse of a bunch of drunk DUs yelling, "Show us your." Fill in yep. the blank. And that, oh, excuse me. My wife just reminded me because Erica was, it was take your clothes off and show me your whatever. And it was terrible, but that was the way it was. And and a couple of thoughts that don't have to do with, with uh, Duda Day, but it just coming through my mind. I remember serenades in the 70s for Homecoming Queens. Yeah. Uh, Derby Day. Uh, which was a crazy, crazy day. Um, yeah, that was the Alpha Sig Rush event. event. That was that was nuts. Um, I remember one year, October, uh, at homecoming, um, a paper mache jock over the the Sig house. Sig house that literally was probably thirty feet long by twenty feet high. It was amazing. And it was just strung across the front of the building. It was nuts. And That's because the on Sixth uh, Street. Yeah, it was two blocks yeah. down from uh, the president's house, and of course the president. They did it on. Uh, they did it on Parents' Weekend. <laughs> it was. Well, it was for homecoming. It was for homecoming, oh, okay. and we were we were ordered. <laughs> to decorate the house. It was the first time they were going to have a parade and decorate the houses. And we were all the football team. So we had not bothered decorating the house and we were told we were to be suspended if the house was not decorated. So <laughs> everything that deck that entire jock strap that went all the way around the house, yeah. all of that was borrowed from the other fraternities and sororities stuff that they were the leftovers from their decorations. We yeah. bought one can of spray paint. Mitch Neese made the bike emblem for that. Oh, we hung it, won the game, and football players, being the superstitious people we are, refused to take it down. We then won the next game. The school broke in, took it down. We lost the last game of the season. <laughs> yeah, it it was just crazy. It was definitely an animal house type feeling thing. And then my last thought was about 
uh, people are talking about marijuana or doobies or smoking it, and also about professors who participated in feeding people on uh, Duda Day. I don't remember the professors feeding everyone on Duda Day in the 70s. However, there was a professor in the 70s who frequently was getting together and smoking some doobies. And I don't know if you guys remember, it was Professor Stoney uh, with the geology department. And and is is literally, it was Stone, I think, but we called him Stoney. And this guy was frequently having parties and everybody was over at uh, his place. So a couple of things I want to touch on from your memories, Phil. Uh, my dad was a SIG in the 60s. And the first time we visited, he visited campus when I was a student. I was volunteering um, for like, you know, hours for the leadership program. And we're walking down 6th Street and I'm like, and like, dad, this is a battered women's shelter. And he was like, battered women's shelter? That's the SIG house. <laughs> oh, yeah. Correct. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And of then, course, the SIGs, um, the SIGs lost their house 20 years later or something. I don't know the story, but. Yeah, they're back now. Um, and then with Professor Stone, uh, as part of a volunteer project <laughs> on campus, I was part of a group where we had to help restore the Westward Home Monument. And uh, Dr. Stone like came out of retirement to be our advisor to deal with this uh, <laughs> precious, fragile rock <laughs> carving. And I did not smoke any Stoney, but it is on brand. I can confirm for his personality, even in his old age. Yeah. So that's that's my recollection. Uh, get Laura to say something. She's got a at least tell me she does she it's either true or not that i put her not up the flagpole but hooked her on and walked away did they not have lawyers in the 70s were people not suing everyone for personal no 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 it's a good days <laughs> some of you mentioned uh, the dawes library i don't know if you recall the, the history of dawes library but uh um there was a, a student uh in in my time he was I think it was president of uh, IFC uh, of uh, student council at Charlie Dawes. Uh, I think he became a, a trustee at one time. Well, his claim to fame, he was a streaker on campus. You know, and, and he became a trustee, if I recall. But he that was his claim to fame back then. He was a little wild. You know? So there's hope for all of us. What's that? There's hope for all of us. Yeah, there is, I guess. Yep. Uh-huh. I was going to say, I'm glad to hear my past won't come up to take me out. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I don't know, Christian, you were driving that, uh, you were a junior at the time. Were you underage? Was it, uh, no, that was my, that was my senior year. We won't, oh, we won't talk I, about any years outside of 2013 <laughs> and 14 when I was fully of age to consume <laughs> alcohol in the state of Ohio. Uh, we shall not discuss any other things that might be incriminating for, as I said earlier, I got to get up and work in HR in the morning. Okay. Uh. I see uh, Beth and Maureen on the line. Do you guys have any ex do not any experiences together you want to share? I don't know that we do. Beth and I only spent a couple years <laughs> um, on, on campus together. I I was going to ask, though, so 1974, those who attended, was that the year that the Beach Boys played Marietta? And do we have anyone here who who was in attendance? Me. I was there. Ah. <laughs> and, and actually, you know what? I've been thinking about that because we used to have spring weekend, yes. which, which was separate from Do Not yeah. Day. And... I, I was there when the Beach Boys were there. And I want to say it might have been my freshman year or uh, and I was a freshman, I guess, 72, 73. But that was fantastic. Um, right. They were in, they were in between. They picked up a gig at Marietta. They were on their way someplace else and they were able to fit, fit, fit it in to come to Marietta. It was know. great. And we yeah. also had Jay Giles. Do you remember the Jay yeah. Giles band? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we had some really good, really good winter things. weekend. We had winter weekend too. It was winter weekend has big concert and then spring. That's right. That's right. Yeah, 
Yeah, but I it's funny, Maureen, that you bring that up because I was thinking about the Beach Boys and I keep thinking, now was that with Duda Day? And then I'm like, no, we had a spring weekend. So yeah, it was fantastic. There's a great feature on Marietta's website of a Marietta moment. I just put it in the chat because I was looking up like Juda Day reminiscences and it's Matthew Berge. Uh, oh, no, 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 not, not Matthew um, Berge. It is Michael Salnick from uh, 1975 mm -hmm. who had talked about the Beach Boys mm -hmm. and, and that experience. It, it, it's a great little memory and Marietta moment and that was pre-Brian Wilson right Nancy no I, no, no? He, was, oh, no. Okay. he was part of it he was one of the originals right yeah, Glenn? yeah. yeah. okay it was the original Beach Boy I mean it it, it was amazing amazing mm -hmm. You know, when, when Beth and I were on campus together, our, our big musical act was um, Vanilla Ice. <laughs> oh, Maureen, <laughs> there were two. You're forgetting uh, CNC Music Factory. Oh, I was abroad. Yeah, yeah. That, Carol, that, that's right. You were abroad. <laughs> yeah, that, that one, I, I feel I might be like a bit prouder. But the Vanilla Ice story is really um, sort of a fun one because I, I think the college was able to book him before his big hit, right? So he wasn't as, as well known yes. and was obligated still to, uh, to, to have the concert. But yeah, not Duda Day. I believe that was before, probably a little beforehand. Um, like yeah. they were saying, I think that was weekend. I think they still did spring weekend yes. mm -hmm. for some of the time when we were there, Maureen. But yeah, you're right. They booked him when he was starting and he would have played at somebody's backyard. And then his, his yeah. crazy and then he <laughs> play. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any it's other unfortunate oh, go ahead, Beth. or that I should say that bands don't tour like in venues rare that you hear of any musical acts going to smaller campuses they're all happy to go to large arenas at big schools but to go to smaller things they just don't seem to do anymore it's harder to get that stuff I don't know I think Marietta got Taylor Swift one year right really um, I saw that on the traditions thing. It was on there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I think. yeah. Taylor Swift was fall 2009 and only her first album was out. We listened to it on a repeat 24 oh, wow. seven in the sorority wow. house and students were like, um, able to help be like security. I think. Yeah. I know a lot of people. Maureen and I did that. Neon shirts. Yeah. So that's amazing. Well, I think think about Marietta College concerts. The, the first one I ever went to was in the '60s, and being a you know Mariettan, uh Spanky and our gang. But uh, I mean, that's that's way you know that's that's way back. But you know, seeing Fleetwood Mac yeah, and right. you know the the Almond Brothers when uh, Almond Brothers, was, that's right? Second to the last show that Dwayne Almond ever did was at Marietta College wow. and you know being there as a you know as a as a, as a kid so, somewhat and then getting to book the Allman Brothers back in 81 uh, you know with you know except for Dwayne still Dickie Betts Greg Allman you know those kind of shows and it was about affordability we paid seventeen thousand dollars to get the Allman Brothers in 1981 you know, uh, when Greg Allman was still alive uh, a couple years ago, you know, that'd be 71,000, not 17,000. So, you know, the affordability, but but to be able to get big artists and, uh, at, at, you know, filling in gigs, the, uh, the market is just way, way different. And Taylor Swift at Marietta College, that, that's quite a legacy when you when you yeah. see her in a uh, world tour these days. Mm -hmm. I, I will say um, when we were discussing this, I had mentioned to Erica um, in the alumni office that, 
um, you know, it's thanks to Marietta College that I learned how to tap a keg because I was one of the students who <laughs> served my, my senior year, <laughs> right? And I, I said, do they even, is that even permitted anymore? Like students serve the, sh <laughs> and no, it's much more <laughs> regulated and oh, controlled. Yeah. But, you know, that life skill was acquired at Marietta. <laughs> <laughs> and that 65 keg thing is amazing when you think about the size of the college. It That's is a it lot is. of kegs. It is. And you know, back then, I hate to say this. I mean, we were allowed to drink even it, at least the AZ house, we were allowed to. Um, mm -hmm. and I think it was just a very different time. It was just a very right. different time. Yeah. And you know, when I think about the liability issues alone, I mm -hmm. think to myself, oh my God, what were they thinking? But you know, we survived and it wasn't and, a litigious society like it is now. Right, right. I guess that's a really good point. But yeah, I mean, it was definitely a different time. So when, when, um, when you all mentioned that, it makes me really sad that my parents and the universe waited until 1992 to bring me into the world. <laughs> <laughs> I love this world of freedom that has like passed and everything is monitored to live yep. in an age of social media where everything is recorded and shared. Yep. It's yep. a struggle to have fun. And that is one thing that I will mm -hmm. say um, about my Marriott experience. Things were still intimate and private and seeing my friends who have gone on to do great things. Um, I'm very pleased that someone wasn't recording their every move um, because we were allowed to be youthful yet still be progressing into the young adults um, that we were. Um, at the time, and then being able to 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 then still for still be able to move forward and grow as individuals and build professional careers. And so, if I want to say one thing in the spirit of Duda, let yeah. Duda always be to you an ability to let it go, not worried about the pressures of society, not worry about what's coming up next, but to live in the moment. And when I think about Duda Day, that is what I personally celebrate. And to Doug, I will raise my glass of tequila, his glass of wine. And if you do have a glass, before we run out of time here, shall we all cheers together to the spirit of the long blue line and to do that day and may it live on forever. Yeah. So good good work, Christian. Yeah. I ran out of bush light. So uh <laughs> cheers to y'all. And it, it's still a great little city. And uh, uh my yeah. lovely wife, Claire. Got me a fresh bush light, you know. Cheers <laughs> to uh, Duda Day everywhere. Let's celebrate it uh, like the good old days. Thanks. Do you have one more thing to add? Yes. yes, I do. I so I when you're talking about all these kegs, so I'm 80, 1987. I remembered something, so I just pulled out my yearbook. And it said that in 1987, there was some insurance liability problem and the campus lost all uh, ability to have party permits ah. and that by the spring, they were able to get it back. But in Duda Day 1987, there was now because of the new liability insurance, they could only have eight kegs <laughs> per day on a weekend only. They couldn't do it on a weekday. So so it was called the beer crisis, otherwise known as Duda Day, 1987. Oh, mm. that's great. Great. I remember that now. Now that you bring it up, I remember that. Do you that's remember? Tragic. <laughs> what a sad affair. Yeah, yeah, I know. From 65 sad. to 8, it was crushing, you know. <laughs> they had the gas crisis back in 74, and you had the uh, beer yeah. crisis in 87. <laughs> you know, Christian, I just wanted to say something to you when you were talking about how different it is and social media and what's, you know, when we were in school, there were no computers, there were no cell phones, and we just like, we spent time together, we interacted. That's what I'm talking because we had, you know, we weren't on our, you know, cell phones you know, looking at and, and worrying about any of that. So, and that was also part of the different time, you know, it, it was just when I think about it, we just had no distractions yeah. and we just had each other in those relationships and the camaraderie and everything, which was really, really important to me about Marietta. Nancy, I absolutely love that about my Marietta college yep. experience. We would gather in yep. Harrison, if you know how Harrison looks, there's that front patio area 
Um, and we would gather there and share stories and spend time together mm -hmm. versus sitting behind a television or a screen. Yeah. And those are the moments that I not only remember the most, but value the most about my Marietta College experience. Yep. Um, my friends, we were able to build intimate relationships. I'm excited um, to spend some time with him this summer. Um, but we were we were really able to connect as opposed to be distance, although right. proximal. Um, right. which is a lot of what you see in society. Yep. But I appreciate events like this where we can gather and be intimate, even though we might be non-proximal. Um, and that is the gift of being a member of the Lawn Blue Line. Well said. Cheers to that, man. Yep. And a little technology. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll Here's take some, name. not all of it, but we'll take some. <laughs> <laughs> On a beautiful night like tonight in Marietta, Ohio, in, in those good old days, there'd be uh, 20 people sitting out on the lawn tossing yeah. a frisbee. And yep. you know, my guess is um, there are not many tossing frisbees or uh, having, having, you know, their people, their folks and, and that uh, community that, that that we built, you know, damn it, uh, yeah. we can't put it back, but uh, good to, good to share it with you tonight. Great yeah, times. Awesome. Is the campus, did they get flooded recently? Oh, they mm -hmm. did. Really? Yeah. That seems to be, that's another tradition at Marietta too, you know, <laughs> over the years. At least once every four years, you're going to gonna get an extended spring break. It, it's been quite the cleanup effort. Um, Glenn, I don't know if you're on Facebook um, or if you received the email from Josh Jacobs that had several of the photos. Um, of the of students and um, employees at the school um, cleaning up. And one of the things that struck me from the Facebook photos that the college released were seeing the athletic fields, the women's softball field, the oh. soccer field, um, <clears throat> field, uh, you know, all underwater. And I, I just think about the people who have to go in and move all that mud off <laughs> and, and whatnot. What an effort. <laughs> well, with that, I want to say thank you everyone for joining this call. I appreciate the intimacy of this conversation. I hope to see absolutely every single one of you all on campus on October 24th, I want to say. I think I'm right. Sometimes I need clues, guys. I got a lot going on. Um, but October 24th through 27th, I'd love to be able to see all of you on, on campus. I definitely plan to be on campus as an MCAAC member. Um, if you're looking to get involved with us, learn more about what we do, please feel free to connect with myself. Doug, Hani, Nancy, um, Lynette, Maureen, Beth, we'd love to talk to you about what's going on. Catherine as well, um, because the college is alive, it's well, our support is needed now more than ever. And being able to come together for events like Humcoming, like Duda Day, supporting our students only ensures the future of Marietta College. And so I'm more excited today to be a pioneer than I've been in a very, very long time. And it's due to the energy, the knowledge and the tradition shared. I'm so glad we were able to record this. So we have the opportunity to look at this in the future and always be able to look back at where we've come from and what we're gonna do next. And so, and I, I just wanna say- You may have to edit you. some of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Not at all. Marietta is known to be pure and authentic. That's what makes us liberal arts. Sometimes we've got to scale back on what we're doing. However, we don't need to censor ourselves for it. It allows us to be who we are. And so I appreciate everyone coming on behalf of the MCAAC. We want to wish you all a good night, a good evening, and most importantly, happy Duda Day. Uh, I'll see you in October. We will see you there. Yeah. Big thanks awesome. to Christian, Doug, and Catherine for facilitating. Yep. So thanks all. Thank <laughs> yeah, you. That's awesome. See you guys. Bye. Bye.